Okay, so let's say you want to add some camshafts to your 4.6 two valve or four valve Mustang. Well, this video is mainly going to apply for the two valve boys out there. And here's a little list that I have that is going to be very useful. So let's check it out. Okay, number one. So I'm going to be reading off of this list, all right? I, I can't memorize all of this, but I've added two sets of aftermarket camshafts into my Mustang GT. And I'm really glad I did that because the first pair, it was by MHS. It was their Stage 2 NA camshaft. And it was a great camshaft, I'm not going to lie. It was a good all-around cams for my setup. But I'm like, okay, I was like, I need some more power. So what did I do? I went to Todd Warren, I told him, here's my setup, uh, what can I do? He's like, all right, power from 2,500 RPMs to 6,500 is going to be greater and idle will be choppier. I was like, all right, that's a bet. So that's kind of the little rundown on what's done to this car. And there's a couple, you know, it's like just about all the bolt-ons you can think of. So my first point with this whole deal is if you're going to be doing cams, please replace your valve stem seals. I see a lot of people doing this, man. I really do. People, they'll spend a couple hundred bucks on their expensive chopsticks, drop them in into a motor that has like 136,000 miles or whatever the like. And they complain as to like, oh, well, I put cams in last summer, but I see smoke coming out of my tailpipe. What's the issue? What's your valve stem seals, bro? <laughs> but yeah, on the more serious note, if you're going to be doing your valve stem seals, in my experience, for some reason, the auto parts store valve spring compressors just don't work all that great. So what I did, I went on eBay, got the cheapest valve spring compressor there was. People sell ones for like 80, 100 bucks. That's stupid. Just use the cheaper ones oil the little screw that comes with it and you'll be fine so that's what i did i think it was like 20 30 bucks it's a very very simple tool you can use it on most 4.6s if not all if i'm if i'm not mistaken and you're i mean it's it's a cheap price to pay 20 bucks it's not that bad also if you do replace your valve stem seals or even your valve springs for that matter. I didn't replace my valve springs because there's really no reason to. Ford built the motor pretty good for the time. So yeah, for those that don't know, the stock 4.6 two valve valve springs are good for up to 6,500 RPM shifts. <laughs> Also, if you replace your valve springs or your valve stem seals, make sure that the cylinder you're working on is at top dead center because you do not want a valve to drop. That would be terrifying. Uh, some people like to use air. I don't really know how I feel about that. I mean, I, I trust a freaking piston more than I trust air. Just do it the right way. Put your piston at top dead center when you're changing out your valve springs or your valve stem seals. And you know, that way there's no worry of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna drop a valve. It's not gonna happen.
And this brings me to my next point, top dead center. The way you check that is what you'll do on these cars or on pretty much any car out there is you're gonna take out the coil pack, you're gonna take out the spark plugs and you're going to have like a long rod, plastic, metal, something that's thin enough to actually get inside the motor without getting seized in there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna spin the crank and what you're going to check for is you're essentially just checking for if this little long piece of rod or screwdriver, whatever you got laying around is moving up or if it's just staying in one spot. And it's pretty simple. Uh, I shouldn't really need to go over this in this video, but if you don't know how to check for top dead center, a quick Google or YouTube search should be enough. I'll get started by putting the cylinder on top dead center. I put the straw in here with two pieces of tape so I can see when the piston is top dead center. So let's rotate the, the crank clockwise. And that's top dead center right there. And if you are going to be changing out valve springs or valve stem seals, uh, just be really careful with the actual keepers, the tiny little freaking pieces. Uh, keepers, lockers, whatever you want to call them. Those things can get uh, lost pretty easily. So, and actually when you're putting everything back together, the valve springs, uh, it's, it's a little tricky. So a little trick that I learned from a guy on YouTube is when you're putting everything back together, you're going to want to use a small flathead screwdriver uh, I would prefer magnetic, but at the time I only had grease. So I put a tiny bit of grease on the screwdriver, a little bit of grease on the actual uh, keeper itself, and then I put it into the valve spring so they could lock in place. There's these grooves right here that the keeper goes on to. There are grooves on this keeper. So make sure you put the grooves on the two indentions that these go on. So when you put it on, Grab some grease to make your life easier. Put some on the inside and on the outside so it will stick to the screwdriver and you put it on the keeper. Not the keeper, the this valve stem seal. You get one on and then you grab another one and repeat the same process. Put some grease on it both sides so it'll stick to the seal so it won't fall out. And be careful not to drop these because it's a pain to find. So yeah, when you're doing this job, don't stress out too much. Just have the right tools on hand and do it the right way. You should be fine. Okay, this is a more serious point. So I have it written down as the crank sprocket spacer goes on last if the green cams with late slash new style trigger wheel. Parentheses, not thick early one. And... That's kind of wrong, but let me show you. So here's a picture of how your crankshaft area should look like. Everything from the sprocket to the spacer to the trigger wheel. That's how it should be. The trigger wheel goes on very, very last. The spacer, I believe, should go in between and then the crank gear by trick flow or, you know, whatever the like. It's just that when we're talking about camshafts, we're talking about an extremely technical subject. I could be here for years and you still will probably be confused. And trust me, I'm still learning. I don't know, I don't know the whole nine yards. I know a good chunk now that I'm on my second set of custom, well, the first was an off the shelf cam, second cam from Todd Warren, but uh, I'm still learning so. So be it. But my next point is the crank trigger wheel teeth face out towards you, okay? So let's say you're looking at the motor, you got the trigger wheel, you're going to see like the, the teeth on the outside of that wheel, those teeth face you, okay? From here, they face you. 
it's just kind of confusing because I'm just going to go right to the next point. It's like when people say to install the left side cam and the right side cam. Now for the four valve guys, I'm sure it's pretty much the same deal. But for us two valves, the right side camshaft is actually going to be the passenger side cam. And the left side camshaft is going to be the driver's side. I, I was really confused about that. I'm like, what the heck? Which side goes where? Let's take it like this, all right? You're inside of your car. The left side camshaft is on the driver's side, on the left. And then the right side is on the right, the passenger. Try not to get it mixed up because I definitely did that. But I don't know. I feel like there's really no way to install the cams on opposite sides. I'm not too sure on that. Hopefully someone in the comments can chime in, but I feel like there's only one way to put them in. Alrighty, next point is a cam holding tool is not a must, but it definitely is nice to have. Vice grips will essentially achieve the same tasks, if I'm being honest. You know, just something so simple like this, vice grips. You put them, in the middle of where the cam is where it doesn't actually make contact with anything so when you release the tension you don't want the cam to do that 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 would not be good so hopefully that clears things up also if you want to do this job right what you're gonna want is a harmonic balancer puller for your actual crankshaft pulley and i say that because you're playing with your crankshaft you don't want to mess this step up you want to make sure you take out the pulley as straight as possible and you want to install it as straight as possible i'm sure if you really wanted to you could take out the crank pulley using just a couple pry bars i don't recommend doing that but if you're really balling on a budget i mean i guess Last but not least, the Haynes Repair Manual. I recommend getting this one. You can find it on eBay for maybe like 20 bucks or less. And there's, there's just so much information in here. Sure, you could find half of this stuff online, but there's just certain things in this book that you're not gonna find online. And there's just so much information. It just keeps going on forever and ever and ever. So uh, even the wiring diagrams, it's got a little bit of everything. So highly recommend this book, especially if you don't really know how to time a motor or if you're kind of new to this stuff. It's definitely not bad for $20, I must say. But I don't know, there's, there's two types of people. Either you're scared that the cam is gonna lose tension and it's gonna break a valve or something, or uh, you just use a vice grip and you do it that way to not let the tension come off so quickly. But me personally, I did things a little different. I bought a dedicated set of cam holding tools for these 4.6 V8s and it worked really nice. But if I'm being real, it's nothing that a vice grip can't already do. So I just, this was my first time doing them the cams and I didn't really know what to expect so I just wanted things to be perfect because this is my daily driver I can't have broken valves or uh, anything detrimental so a cam holding tool definitely isn't a must but me personally I, I have one already and I'll keep using it I, I bought it for on Amazon two of them for like 30 bucks so it's not too bad but if you want to just save yourself some money, if, you're, if, if you already have vice grips, just use the vice grips. And like I said, camshafts can be an extremely technical subject. So this brings me to my next point. If you're going to be putting cams in your car, any car, but we're talking about the Mustang right now. If you're going to be talk, if you're going to be putting cams in your Mustang, get a cam that you like, that's for your taste, because what i prefer in my cams probably isn't what you prefer i went for street performance so that's what i got street performance and i love the cams they're great the todd warren ones <laughs> Now, if you, go, if you decide to go, you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to get a, a, a custom cam only for your setup. 
because yeah like there's a lot of different variables that factor into what kind of cam you should get whether you have 410 gears whether you have an automatic whether you have 373s whether you have long tube headers uh this it's just so many different variables what kind of intake manifold you're using what's your desired rpm range do you want your torque to be uh higher up or do you want it to be on the low end there's it's just it, we can talk here for days so make sure you know what you're getting yourself into because like the first cams i got the mhs stage twos they weren't bad at all i didn't notice any loss of torque and any of the rpm ranges but as soon as i got my todd warren cams that's when i noticed the car was much more choppier and it, it was definitely a bit peppier but it's kind of weird it's a double-edged sword because it does feel really torquey down low but then there's days where i floor it and it, it feels like you can't even feel any torque for that matter really and you just can't really feel any of the torque so i'm guessing that's just the trade-off when you go with more aggressive cams your power band will shift up higher and it makes sense you know there's a reason why people are like oh is this cam streetable well uh, will i be able to daily it and you shouldn't really need to worry about that on these cars if you don't get too aggressive with it with both sets of cams i ran no issues at all none whatsoever I even freaking ran a tune that was for MHS Stage 2 cams for the new Todd Warren cams, and the car still ran great. It wasn't as fast, I ain't gonna lie about that, but it still ran great. But then after I got a tune, the car woke up. But yeah, uh, if you're looking for advice on what kind of cam you should get, don't talk to the dumbasses at American Muscle or uh lmr or whoever sells cams they're those people don't know anything they don't really they're not even going to question what kind of things you have in your setup go to someone like like todd warren cams or apocalypse performance he'll help you out he'll tell you what cam is going to suit your needs which one is terrible for your needs like that's literally why i got a second set of cams because i posted on a little group he has on facebook i was like hey guys so uh how good are these mhs stage 2 cams this is these are all my mods and i feel like i could get a little more power and right away ty warren's like yeah those are no good for a manual with 373 gears and like that's where you start to learn like okay uh this cam is not for my setup so please 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 i'm begging you please do your research ahead of time don't be that guy it was like yeah i'm gonna put a stage four cam the stages don't matter stages don't mean anything that's just a way of expressing a cam that you don't know anything about that's essentially what it means so you're just kind of getting well yeah you are getting an off-the-shelf cam based on what a manufacturer recommends for this setup and please do yourself a favor and I, I know this is probably gonna sound repetitive but there's just a lot of people that don't understand this at least do some research into what a camshaft does to dumb it down just in one simple sentence a camshaft will alter the way that your valves move up and down maybe they might stay open longer maybe they might open uh, even wider and it's just it's all about what you want so just take your time when you're learning about the cams make sure you make the right investment because i mean can you, you used to be able to get cams for like what 650 750 thanks inflation be smart be smart if you're looking for street performance look for a cam with street performance like if you decide to go with an off-the-shelf cam a stage one stage two whatever uh, you know there's a lot of different sound clips on youtube to hear if you're into the whole i only want sound i don't really care about power yeah so the next point i have written down is essentially what i just got done saying uh it's it says many companies like mhs high tech cms trick flow and etc make pretty good off-the-shelf cams but if you're serious like really really serious about this 
get a custom cam from a guy like Todd Warren. Do it the right way. I wish I did it the right way the first time, but at least I got the experience on putting the cams in my car and at least I got the yeah the experience to to feel the difference between off the shelf cams versus custom ones next it's going to be if you're going to be doing cams then change out your valve cover gaskets while you're at it okay it's just common sense like if you're doing a long tube headers i made a video about that already and you're going to be dropping the whole front suspension replace anything that's shot while you're there any worn bushings tie rods ball joints if you're already there then go for it but i would definitely recommend getting new valve cover gaskets if you haven't already dug into your motor i this is cause, okay so this car it's like a early 2001 but it has a romeo motor and has a t45 transmission and it's just been like really hard for me to figure out what parts this car has without actually digging down there and seeing for myself because if you don't know ford made a change in the early 2000s or you know into 2001 mid-year where they just did something a little differently where they put in the romeo motors instead of the windsors and different transmissions whatever so that always kind of threw everything off when i try to order parts for this car and it's funny because i ordered my valve cover gaskets from rockauto.com and i didn't really know what grommets to get i i just really didn't because it said oh well your grommets don't work but they work on a 2003 2004 mustang and i just got really confused by that so i didn't even buy them well i did buy them but i didn't use them 20 years on this motor with like 94 95,000 miles on it and it's still running the original valve cover grommets and there's no leaks so i'm just gonna leave it at that because i don't want to go down there and replace the gaskets it's a freaking headache trying to take these valve covers out when you pull them out you're you're more than likely gonna feel like you're gonna break them but uh, don't be afraid and just change out the valve cover gaskets while you're there if you can please i didn't replace my timing cover gasket i just reused the one that was already there and i just put little dabs of gasket maker on on a couple of points hopefully i can find a picture on the internet but this is where i recommend putting those dabs of gasket maker why because you so you don't want any oil leaks trust me after putting on a valve cover or i'm sorry timing cover you do not want to take it out after that let's talk about degreeing degreeing isn't necessary for a lot of cams but you'll more than likely make the most efficient amount of power with a degreed set that is off before degreeing now sometimes you can get lucky install a cam straight up which is just you know without degreeing it and you won't have any issues like the car is gonna just run as if it's spot on and that's what happened to me with my mhs stage 2 cams i got them degreed by mhs themselves because i mean why not it was it was super easy to just drop them in and be done with it but with the todd warren cams he can make them so that you don't need a degree cams or the ones that you want now if you're going crazy yeah you're gonna need a degree them but for the most part I, okay let me show you the message he sent me he said degreeing two valves is overstated and i mean that's from like that's from the camshaft god himself so yeah there's a lot of people who are like oh my gosh you're so dumb for not degreeing your cams but it's really not that bad like the dude who tuned my car marty down at most speed shop i did a street tune with him and he said everything looked perfect everything looked great there was like nothing wrong and it's funny because uh like in the video he's like yeah people don't degree the cams and it throws everything off i'm gonna say you're the first person who we've done a cam tune for in a long time Or, you know, the wrong spark plugs or whatever. And 
uh, here I am without a degree set of cams. It just installs straight up. No issues. The car runs perfect. The short term fuel trims are right where they need to be. Car runs great. It has great drivability. I have no complaints. So it really all depends what, what kind of uh, what bottom end you're running and what cam you have. But always just verify with other gurus if you need a degree or cams or if you know how to do this stuff yourself why are you even watching this video let's visit the timing cover subject again okay so i have written down here that timing cover bolts are all different so make sure you know where they go and yeah it's true there's like what 13 bolts and they're all different size it's so freaking hard to memorize where they go if you lose track of where everything goes so a little trick that I learned from my dad is you got a little hole, right? Let's say this is your timing cover and you know, you're know you just trying to feed a bolt in there. You're trying to see how long it is. You see where I'm going here? Uh, a big zip tie like one of, <laughs> one of these. This is like a million inches. <laughs> Jeez, why is this so big? But anyways, like if you try to put this big zip tie in that hole, it's it's not really going to fit. Whereas you put in the other bolt or you know zip tie in this case, you're going to see it's going to hit something. And that's how you know that the bolt belongs there. Uh, I'll try to put an illustration on the screen of where all the bolts go. I can't promise you anything, but uh, hopefully that helps. Next point is power steering and coolant will have to be drained. Radiator fan needs to come out to fit an impact air gun for easy removal of the crank pulley bolt. So when you're working on your car, this is kind of the space you're working with. And to fit an air gun down here, uh, maybe you can get lucky, but uh, either way, it's just a really tight fit. So you're 100% gonna need to take out the radiator fan. As for the coolant tank, uh, I literally just moved mine to the side and I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to drain the coolant if I remember correctly. It, I mean, if you're already there, you might as well put in fresh fluid anyways. And it's gonna make your life a thousand times easier if you move this hose out of here. I've seen a couple people who actually install the cams with this hose there, but it's just like, taking up space. You want all the space in the world when you're doing cams in your car. Also, please do yourself a favor. Don't make the mistake I did the first time I did the cams. I in, I installed the cams. Well, I didn't install them dry because I added motor oil as much as I could. But even then, I started up the car. I heard a really nasty metal or metal chafing noise. And it, it took like a good five, 10 minutes to go away. But that was just, that's not a sound you want to hear. So when you're going to do cams, there's a reason why you see a lot of people using assembly lube. And it's, it's just for the startup. And there's this little myth. I don't really know where it came from, but people are like, yeah, you should drain your oil after 500 miles because what happens is the assembly lube will get stuck in the oil pickup tube. And it's like, where are you guys coming up with this stuff? You don't have to change your oil after you put cams in and have assembly lube. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry, I don't know where people get this information from. And since we're talking about fluids already, since you're going to be draining your power steering fluid, your coolant, put new fluids. Don't reuse the fluid that you have. Don't do that. Whenever you're modding cars, just keep in mind, you got to pay to play. That's the simplest way I can say it for you. So it's going to cost a little bit of money here and there, but cry now be done with it also since you're already gonna be there you might as well change out your oil pressure sensor switch uh, mine it would fluctuate over the winter like i would 
just tap the gas a tiny bit while I was idling when the car was cold and you would just see the oil pressure spike up and then it go flat down and and it was only like that when the car was cold and it never did that when when the weather outside was hot but whenever it was cold it'd do that all the time so I'm like screw it and this is getting really annoying it's a like 10 20 dollar sensor why not replace it so if you don't know where it's at the oil pressure sensor switch it's gonna be underneath it's 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 right beside your oil filter and there was a wise man on a mustang forum that once said that if you're going to be replacing that sensor to actually count the amount of threads that it takes to take the sensor out and the same amount of threads that it took to take out is the same amount you're going to use to actually screw it back in now the reason they say this is because it's extremely easy to crack that housing i didn't experience that thank god or else i would have been terrible but uh i was just very careful on how i tightened it and it's good to go fresh new sensor oil pressure gauge just started working right away it's a dummy gauge it doesn't matter if you have like three psi of oil pressure or if you have 60 the gauge is always gonna just read normal so don't rely too much on your oil gauge it's not too useful but at the same time it is useful now for the tuning a tune is definitely a must if you're going to be doing cams but not always <laughs> i'm like i'm having like counter arguments with my points but if you go to someone like todd warren he'll make you a set of cams that doesn't need a tune like the cams i'm running right now they don't require a tune at all but they'll be better with one whereas the mhs stage twos i uh, well i loaded up a, a brent speed tune right away when i started up the car but I have heard of people being like, yeah, I, my check engine light came on for, for a car running too lean. The car kept stalling. That's a real thing. People's cars will actually stall out and, and it just won't feel good. It's going to feel like the car's misfiring like crazy. And it's just not going to be a smooth ride. You're not going to be able to drive it on the street comfortably. And that's what happens when you go really crazy with cams. So yeah, just keep in mind, when you're doing cams, you're not just replacing two expensive chopsticks. You're, you're going to be doing a couple things along the way so that you can make the install worth it. Because it's not really worth it if you pay someone else to do all that work for you, spend like 1000 or 1500 and then you get a Dynatune that's already two grand total and it's just not worth it i got an email tune that's really all you should need you don't need a dyno tune i got a street tune so it's essentially a dyno tune just without the numbers so th that's probably why i'm preaching why I'm, this car runs amazing <laughs> but either or should be fine oh yeah so this is an important one so when you're going to dig deep into your motor taking the timing cover off you might as well replace all the timing components while you're there uh, this is, you know, this goes for all the timing chains, the guides, the arms, the tensioners. Make sure you get metal tensioners, not the cheap plastic ones that are non-ratcheting. On a Ford Modular 5.4 or 4.6 liter two valve engine, oftentimes you guys may notice that the factory timing chain tensioners will come plastic. The problem with these plastic tensioners is that oftentimes the gaskets here will give way, they will leak, and that will cause a loose timing chain, it can cause serious engine damage. So I oftentimes suggest that if you are in here doing any timing work, always replace the plastic tensioners with the older cast iron design. These tensioners do not utilize a gasket, so they're not prone to leaking. Get some good tensioners, cam tensioners. That's mainly what's important here because everything else is fine. Yeah, so one of my, I believe they're called guide arms. I'll try to correct myself on the screen and I'll post a picture. So one of those was separating that little plastic piece, it was coming off. And so I just JB welded it together and put it back in sent it. I do a couple of hard pulls and I hear like this rattle on high RPMs. I'm like, damn it, what now? I don't wanna take the timing cover off just to replace uh, one little piece because I'm not satisfied with the performance, so 
why not just get a new set of cams? So that's kind of how it all happened for me. One of my timing components just wasn't up to par. And so I was like, screw it. So I went to AutoZone. I bought the Duralast timing kit. Now, people have a lot of mixed opinions on this. And this is a very good point I want to touch on. <clears throat> so I just got the timing kit. You know, I got just the timing kit itself. I didn't get the cam gears or the crank sprocket or anything like that. I saved myself like 40 bucks because I'm like, okay, why? why do i need to buy that stuff when i have my factory parts here in very good condition and the the kit i bought it's a duralast and a lot of people they'll buy either ford performance or the cloys timing kit those are like the main two that you should ever buy and i didn't know i didn't know and so todd warren uploads a little post saying yeah we had a customer that just bought the entire timing kit with the the cam gears and the crank sprocket and he went to go degree his cams and they were i think retarded or advanced by 30 degrees 30 degrees that is crazy like i didn't know that because like i said i had my factory cams and uh, Thankfully, mines were not pressed on the actual like bolts and cam gears. So I just reused them on the new cams and I was good to go. But yeah, I definitely didn't notice that. If I were to be one of those people who just didn't know, I bought the whole freaking timing kit with the cam gears and the crank sprocket and I put them on the new cams, it wouldn't have been good. It would have been like, I would have been chasing the issue for ever. So hopefully that saves you some frustration when you're gonna replace your timing components. OEM's pretty good stuff, if I gotta be honest. I've done a lot of research. Everyone just says OEM stuff is good for like 7,000 RPMs, that's crazy. And as long as your cam tensioners are metal and they're the ratcheting design, you should be fine. But I, I wouldn't go, buying the cheapest set you can buy don't get the cheapest ebay special do it the right way you're playing with your motor and if i'm correct this is an interference motor so if any timing component goes then the whole motor goes next if buying cams without bolts washers and primary gears cam gears buy ford 12 millimeter bolts torque to yield those are, you know, the Ford ones are torque to yield. And if, for those who don't know what TTY, torque to yield means, it basically means that when you install a bolt, you torque it to spec, you take it out, it's a stretch bolt now. So if you try to torque it to 100 foot, 100 foot pounds, it might not go all the way to 100 foot pounds. It might only go to 90, maybe 80. And you kind of get where this is going. Or you can do what I did. Uh, I, I went the expensive route. <laughs> I decided to get the 12 millimeter bolts from ARP themselves. And they're nice bolts. They're definitely nice to have. They're not torqued to yield, so you can use them like a million different times. It's nice, but you are paying double the price. So just whatever fits in your budget, go for it. You will need to, if you're like me, uh, okay, so yeah, if you're like me, you had the cam gears and the cam sprocket, you just needed the cam bolts, then so yeah, that's all you need. You just need to buy two of those 12 millimeter bolts and you're good to go. You can reuse the washer that comes. Um, it depends if your cams aren't pressed on or bolted on, like the actual bolts themselves, but you should be able to use the washer, no issue, because that's what I did. Also, there is no break-in needed for your cams because followers have hydraulic rollers. No roller cams require a break-in. Now, if you know anything about the followers on these cars, it's that they're hydraulic. So, you know, this is an, an old school design. So you don't have to worry about no break-ins. As soon as you put them in, I probably just drive like just a couple miles and you're free to send it. I literally just sent it as soon as I put mine in. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, so get this. There's no need to prime your oil pump 
before startup unless you have a new oil pump i'd imagine right but you can either disconnect the crank sensor or you can hold the gas pedal all the way down when you're starting the car or you can take out fuel pump relay whatever uh, you could do it a few different ways but todd warren actually taught me this way before i get into that I'm that dude who just wants to prime the oil to raise oil pressure before I start the car up just because it's my list. You know, I've only done it twice and uh, I'm pretty sure people have done it like thousands of times. They're like, yeah, just, just start it. There's, nothing's going to happen. But me, I'm just a little paranoid and I'm sure many of you will be the same way. So uh, let me show you something that Todd Warren showed me. So he said that Ford design these mustangs automatic or manual to where you hold the gas pedal all the way down probably can't even see that you hold the gas pedal all the way down and then you turn the key to start the car and it's not going to start it's just going to keep cranking but that's only if you have the pedal to the metal if your foot is all the way down in the gas because as soon as you take it out and then you try to start the car up it's gonna fire right up so just be really careful if you're like doing a whole rebuild with a new oil pump and you know new pistons rod all of that so keep that in mind it's definitely not necessary but i like to take the extra step because it's my daily driver and i need to make sure it's in tip-top shape or if you're dealing with like a customer car that has just so many pieces into it you would I imagine you would feel more comfortable priming the oil instead of just firing the motor right up. But that's that's totally up to you. It's it's all personal preference. I often see on Facebook people posting videos of like, okay, I have slack on one timing chain, but the other one's nice and tight. What the heck is going on? Uh, is it safe to button up and send it? What the heck is happening? I'm putting in all new timing components. Cam tensioners need oil pressure to actually hold tension. So when you're putting in all new timing components, I would spin the crank by hand. I mean, who wouldn't do that? You would be a fool to not do that. And that's how mine's tightened up. I didn't have that issue. But if you do have that issue, don't freak out. Because as soon as you turn the motor, those chains are going to get nice and tight because they need oil pressure. I like to think that I know a thing or two, but I'm just learning like the rest of you. So please, if there's anything that I'm saying wrong or any uh, false information, let me know in the comments because I like to know when I'm wrong too. Okay, we're almost done. Bear with me. I know this is a really long video, but it's informative. Uh, like, like I mentioned previously, you're not going to be just changing out two expensive chopsticks when you're doing cams or four expensive chopsticks, depending if you have a two valve or four valve. You're going to be changing out other pieces as well, like long tube headers, for example. Your, your headers on your car, they really do play a factor. I wouldn't even bother with shorty headers if you're going the naturally aspirated route. Get long tube headers. That's what everyone recommends. And it makes sense because if you're going to be pushing more air in you might as well do the extra step to push it out even faster too now, now for us manual boys you're more than likely gonna need a steeper set of gears if you don't already have a set already installed now the reason behind this is <laughs> is if you know how rear end gears in a rear wheel drive car work or a higher gear with a numerically lower ratio it just makes the engine work much more efficiently and torque multiplication. We can talk about this all day long. Now, where I'm trying to get at this is if you're going to be making your motor more efficient in the more performance oriented way, you're definitely going to need two and two that go together. So it just makes sense. It's like for the automatic guys, you're going to need two different things. You're going to need gears and you're going to need a higher stall converter because the car is just gonna feel like a dog if you decide to put cams in without changing that stuff. And that's kind of what I noticed with the MHS stage two cams, they were perfect for stock 327 gears. But as soon as I got the 373 gears, 
it just felt like I was leaving performance on the table. So now I understand why they say, you know, to change out your gears or get a different stall converter. And this brings me to my next point. I know I've said that like a thousand times already, but if you're gonna get cams that is fairly aggressive, like the set I'm running, it's not too crazy. It's not the biggest cam in the world. It's definitely not a stock cam, but it's like kind of right in the middle. It's a happy medium. But the car shakes like a lot. And it, I mean, it's always going to do that if you got cams. But especially with these new ones, geez, my whole exhaust rattles my bumper like hell. And it's so annoying. Like, <laughs> you, you'll hear at the stop, like you hear, and the way my exhaust is plays a factor as well because. It's a cheap SR Performance exhaust I got from eBay. Because I wanted to redo all of the rusted out stock two and a quarter inch piping that was from the BBK Cadet H pipe and after. Everything after that, the cat back, is stock. It was just terrible. I had Flowmaster 40s welded in a while ago. And so I bought this cat back exhaust. I'm like, okay. Uh, I can just piece it together. I'll just weld the mufflers on. It won't be a big deal. But that was the worst cat back ever. What I'm trying to get at this is if you put cams in your Mustang, make sure it's not a clapped out car with a really crap suspension, uh, a ghetto exhaust that's completely rusted apart or something like. Do it right. Make sure the car is stable or else you're going to know exactly what that 21-year-old kid with the white mustang was telling you about on youtube that that you need to make sure your car is stable because it's gonna shake now i'm just running stock replacement motor mounts rubber ones from autozone and the car feels great it's comfortable around town that's what i wanted i didn't really want to get anything solid or polyurethane i'm kind of regretting that now but i feel like with the polyurethane the car would have shook even more causing more noises and it's just not fun so just rule out any noises before you attempt to do this job like obviously make sure uh your bottom end isn't knocking or anything like that if there's no weird ticks noises make sure your cats if you still have cats which is probably not even a thing for you mustang guys but if you got cats make sure they're good they're in good condition pretty good information but, and I, I thought I'd share it with you guys. But that's pretty much it. Uh, enough with this garbage. You don't, I'm sure you don't want to hear that nonsense anymore. I just wanted to let you know what you should know. And the question is, is it worth it? Hell yeah, it is. It's so worth it. It's so, so worth it. The... Like I said, you're going to notice the car shakes at idle and it's like the coolest thing ever. I would really recommend uh, a different motor mounts if you're going to go this route because I definitely regret choosing just factory replacements. But dude, the, the car shakes, the car sounds great. And when you're at a stoplight, like people can hear the boom, 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 boom. Sure, it's not that loud because I have cats, but it's pretty loud. I've had two people ask me, hey, is your car straight pipe? Because it's just really loud. And like even there's this one time where I took the car in for an alignment at a mom and pop shop. And they were like, uh, what do you have done to the car? It feels so much different. Is this the original motor? I've had two people tell me that. They're like, is this the original motor? I'm like, yeah, it just has cams and bolt-ons and long tube headers. So I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about of the whole crank the car with the gas pedal all the way down and it's not going to start. So here we go. <laughs> Again, you probably can't see, but I got my pedal to the metal. You can literally hear it out there. <laughs> pedal to the metal in the on position check this out right it's, it's not gonna start watch here can i all right 
Oops, I gotta, of course I gotta put the clutch in. This is a stick shift car. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look, it's not gonna crank, or it's not gonna start. Ooh. Now, as soon as you let your foot off the gas, check this out. Let me open the garage so I don't die in here. There you have it. It's pretty loud. But I'm in my garage, so it makes sense. Now, just for you guys who install wide bands on camped cars, just keep in mind, this is not gonna be stable. This doesn't mean there's an exhaust leak. It just means you have cams. Because why? Because the intake and exhaust valve, or valve, depending on what kind of car you have, they're all moving at, the, at, at a different time. So, of course, the air to fuel ratio is gonna be bouncing around. That's totally normal. But look how, look how the motor shakes. I don't know if you can see that. Here. It's a little hard to tell, but the motor still shakes a lot. And that's a brand new motor mount. Barely like a thousand miles on them. I'm, I'm gonna shut up so you can hear the car a little bit. Okay, so there you heard it. It sounds great, right? It, it, it sounds great. Everyone loves it on the road. And I honestly don't have any complaints with the whole camshaft install. So the question is, is it worth it? Hell yeah, it is. It, it, you can feel the power immediately. Now, this all depends on what kind of cam you get. Obviously, my cam is made for street performance. So that's exactly what I'm going to get. And it feels good. It, you can feel the power just about at any RPM range. And it definitely pulls really hard. And I don't want to say in the higher RPMs because high RPMs, I would consider to be like over 7,000. But uh, in this situation, the high RPMs is 6,500 for me. And dude, it just keeps pulling and pulling. Like I really wish I could get a different bottom end, rebuild my transmission and, and you know stretch it all the way to 7,000 RPMs. I can only imagine what kind of monster this car would be if I had a setup like that. But for the most part, uh, expect anywhere from 15 to 40 or 50 horsepower. And also make sure your engine is running good because you definitely don't want to cam a car that isn't running 100%. Please make sure it's running 100% because that's how you're going to get the the most amount of potential out of it and also the sound is going to differ the sound is never going to be the same on any car on my car sounds great even with catalytic converters and chambered mufflers i like how it sounds and i'm really surprised it sounds that way but if you're if you're running factory catalytic converters all four and you're running the stock mufflers you're probably not going to hear a single thing out of those cams so 99.9% .9 of the people who get cams for these cars, they make sure the, that the exhaust is the way that they want it to be. They want it to be loud, okay, the cams are gonna be loud. They want it to be quiet, okay. I've heard some pretty crazy setups that, uh, that have cams and you know the whole block is, has been went through. 
but you just don't really hear the car or the cam so it's like cool there's definitely setups like that so just because it makes a lot of noise doesn't mean it's fast like this car is definitely quick but it's it's not that fast it, it's, there's definitely room for more potential this car sounds great it's not a super super loud raspy car or anything like that no it's it's a pretty refined sound because it's got catalytic converters the high flow bbk uh flow master 40s two and a half inch exhaust to three inch tips all the way back and long tube headers by bbk so it's it's a nice sounding car it really is and my point with this is it's really gonna boil down to what you like if you like the sound of this car you know the secret but if you don't like the sound of this car don't don't be afraid to change out your mufflers or your mid pipe or or your headers or whatever because this is a pretty quiet car by today's standards 99.9% .9 of the people that get cams though delete the cast the mufflers everything and just have a crazy sounding setup but it's just super freaking loud if you're into that hey if, if you like it i love it i guess but i didn't really want a really loud car especially being a daily so i was kind of scared it was gonna be a little too loud but it's, it's perfect man with the cams it lopes just right that's really all i've got to say if i got anything else i'll add it in but yeah man this car you just don't get tired of driving it a, a, a five speed car with 373 gears freaking drag radials cams and a really nice sounding exhaust you just can't beat it and that's that's all i've really got so if you're gonna be doing cams just keep in mind it's a pretty technical process and it's a little expensive but if you're going to be doing the work yourself or if you have a buddy who can do it for like a couple hundred bucks and all you need is to get a tune then hey that's pretty sweet yeah man i'm happy and hopefully you will be happy too